Um, I, I, I started paying more attention to them, and uh, the deeper I have been able to dive, the, the more interesting stuff I have, uh, have, have found. So uh, I hope after listening to me, you will uh, agree. And um, these are uh, focused on certainly the, the Prexies and, uh, and local letter uses uh, of that issue. Um, first, I want to start off with what, what exactly is a local letter. I think uh, most people probably are uh, very familiar with that, but uh, it's basically a, uh, a subcategory of first class mail. Um, there, are, there are two main categories. There's carrier office mail and there's non-carrier office mail. Um, they're fairly self-explanatory. Uh, carrier office mail was delivered by a mail carrier within the service area of the post office at which it was mailed. Non-carrier office mail was uh, dropped off and picked up uh, at the post office, typically at a, at a post office box, and there was no service provided by a, uh, a mail carrier. Um, what about rates and, uh, and lengths of time that this service was available? Um, both carrier and non-carrier office um, uh, mail was available when the, the Prexies were issued. In fact, uh, local letter uses date back to the mid-19th century. And uh, I think uh, classic collectors that certainly are, are very familiar with what was termed drop rate covers uh, back in the, uh, the mid-19th century. As far as rates are concerned, the, uh, the rate for local delivery at a non-carrier office uh, at the outset of the Prexy era in 1938 was a, a penny per ounce. That rate was increased in 1952 to, three, uh, to two cents, and then, uh, then again in 1958 on August 1st to, to three cents. And non-carrier office service was abolished in, in 1968, uh, well after uh, we typically see Prexies in use. The uh, carrier office mail was available for two cents per ounce, uh, and it remained at that rate until this was abolished on March 26th of 1944. So we'll start with a, a couple examples of, of non-carrier local letters. Um, the, uh, as we just mentioned, the, the rate was one cent per ounce, and this is a, uh, like a very nice example uh, of, of that rate on a, a non-carrier office local letter from Cut Bank, Montana. Um, it has a lot of the features you typically see and like to see on a, a non-carrier cover. Um, it, it has a machine cancel with a, a, a date and time uh, in the dial. Um, it's addressed to, uh, it's a very minimal address, Ingram family in the city, and it has, also has their box number, which is nice, box 651. Um, Cut Bank, uh, it, is a, uh, is a very small town, uh, about 30 miles uh, just south of the Canadian border. Um, so this is a, a, a nice example of a non-carrier local letter rate. Um, here are two examples of the two cent per ounce rate. And uh, as we mentioned, this uh, was increased to two cents per ounce from a penny in uh, 1952. Um, as you, as you, Get into the two cent era. Uh, I think they get a little bit more difficult to find. Um, the both of these are from the Pacific Northwest. The one on the left is from Staten, Oregon. Um, Staten is a, a small town uh, about 12 miles outside of Salem, Oregon. Uh, I think it's a nice cover because it has the the corner card from the car dealership uh, uh, in Staten. It has the uh, the Staten machine cancel and uh, just a, a very minimal address, uh, a utility company in Staten, Oregon. The one on the right uh, was in Steve Suffolk's collection. It is a, a two cent uh, per ounce uh, non-carrier local letter rate used in Entiat, Washington, uh, which is also a very small town in the state of Washington. It's about midway between Seattle and, uh, and Spokane. And again, notice the, uh, the address is, is very uh, minimal, which is typical on a lot of these uh, non-carrier office uses. <laughs> This service was uh, also available in uh, American possessions and territories, and here are two examples. Uh, the one on the bottom left uh, is a uh, non-carrier rate used in uh, St. Croix. Um, some people might know that Dr. Thetford was a, uh, a, a philatelist, and uh, it's not terribly difficult to find things uh, either addressed to him or, or, or mailed from him. But uh, this is certainly a, uh, a nice, legitimate uh, example uh, used in St. Croix in 1941. The one on the right is uh, from Lanai City, uh, Hawaii. That's a, a one cent per ounce uh, non-carrier uh, local letter rate in Lanai City. 
And Lanai uh, is, a, is a very small island off the coast of Maui. And uh, sort of the, a sidebar to that is uh, uh, John Dole of, uh, of uh, Dole uh, Pineapple Plantation uh, fame uh, made his home there for a while. And Lanai City was actually uh, built uh, to house and service the employees of, of the Dole uh, Pineapple Plantations. Here's another example of uh, non-carrier local letter rate. And this is, uh, I think it's a very neat cover. It's a, an internment camp or relocation camp use. Um, I think some people might recognize it. This is uh, uh, a uh, non-carrier local letter rate used entirely within the confines of the Hart Mountain uh, Relocation Center. Um, it's a February uh, 1945 use. You can see in the upper left-hand corner, there's a Hart Mountain uh, return address. There's a nice dated Hart Mountain machine cancel, and it's addressed to Community Christian Church, Block 22 Local. Uh, in the bottom left, it says Attention VR. VR, I can't remember his full name, but he was the pastor of uh, Community Christian Church. Um, only two of the relocation centers uh, allowed or recognized uh, uh, intra-camp uh, local letters. Uh, one was Hart Mountain. Uh, the other one happened to be the Mini Doka Camp in, uh, in Hunt, uh, Idaho. The only one that allowed the non-carrier local letter rate was, in fact, Hart Mountain, though. And the, the rationale for that was that the letters were actually delivered by residents of the camp. And since they were technically not employees of the post office department, uh, they, they were uh, uh, considered non-carrier local letters. So uh, um, I think this is kind of a very neat, uh, neat cover. Um, now we get into some of the, the carrier office local letter uses. Uh, as I mentioned uh, before, the, uh, the rate for carrier office uh, local letters was two cents per ounce uh, when the Prexies were issued. On the upper right is a, is a fairly early use uh, in 1938, used in Springfield, Massachusetts on July 22nd. The two cent stamp was issued on June 3rd, so this is a second month of use. On the uh, bottom left is a two cent horizontal coil line pair that pays uh, double the local letter rate uh, used within the uh, uh, service area of the uh, Seattle uh, post office. Um, I have another uh, multi-weight cover coming up, but I, in, in, in my experience, uh, multi-weight local letter uses are, are relatively uncommon and certainly above double and triple weight uh, are very seldom seen. Um, here's another cover that was in Steve Suffolk's collection. This is a, uh, um, a use within New York City. It's a return address on the back of the envelope is, is shown at the top of the War Committee, the bar, uh, mail July of 1942 to an attorney on Wall Street. And uh, this is a triple weight cover, uh, which is nicely paid by a complete uh, booklet pane of the, the one cent uh, prexy. So six cent fee for a triple two cents per ounce uh, carrier office local letter. Um, some other uh, twists and turns on the carrier office uses. Uh, again, just like in the non-carrier uh, uses, there are carrier office territorial and possession uses. The one on the upper left is a uh, two cent per ounce carrier office uh, local letter used entirely within the delivery area of the San Juan Puerto Rico post office. It has a very nice printed corner card from San Juan, it has the, uh, the dated San Juan machine cancel tying the stamp and uh, the address uh, of the uh, Puerto Rico Light and Power Company in San Juan. Both of the other covers have a, a, a naval tie-in, and I, I think they're, they're fairly neat. Um, uh, I don't think they were necessarily entirely appreciated for, for uh, what they were uh, at the time, but uh, be that as it may, the one in the, in the middle uh, is uh, postmarked on the USS Arizona, and uh, that's a 1939 use. Um, it's a uh, envelope that has a return address of Long Beach, California. Long Beach is a, is a major port in California. The Arizona was in port uh, at this time in 1939, and a crew member uh, here is mailing a uh, either an application for service or paying a bill to the Department of Public Utilities in Long Beach. And since the Arizona was in port, uh, he took advantage of the fact that he could use the, the, his uh, two cent local uh, letter rate when mailing something from the Arizona to uh, uh, the utility in Long Beach. Um, 
The bottom left cover is a, is, is actually a ship to ship cover. Um, it is a 1939 use also. It's from the USS McDougal, which is a, a destroyer. D, it was DD 358, and um, you'll notice in the in the bars on the cancel uh, where it has USS McDougal, it says uh, San Francisco, California. The McDougal was also in port in San Francisco at the time this cover was mailed, and it is addressed to the captain of the USS Concord, which was an Omaha-class light cruiser, which was uh, also in port in San Francisco. And uh, this was not used as official mail, uh, but uh, this was uh, transmitted as a two cent per ounce carrier office local letter between the USS McDougal and the USS Concord while they were both in port in uh, San Francisco. Uh, another carrier office local use, uh, I think it's a, a very neat cover uh, as well. This is a December 1942 use, and uh, um, I think uh, all the, the features on this are, are kind of interesting. The uh, corner card is Cameron and Johnstone, which is a, a public accounting firm, or was a public accounting firm in Honolulu. They specialize in taxes and audits, and the uh, um, Addressee is, uh, some people may recognize, it's Mr. Alfred Smith, and uh, the address is Sand Island, Oahu. Um, Alfred Smith is one half of the, uh, the, the family of Alfred and Susan Smith, uh, both of whom were naturalized uh, American citizens and uh, uh, of, uh, of German uh, ancestry. And they um, were both arrested on December 8, 1941, uh, for their vocal support of uh, Nazi Germany, and uh, both were initially interned on Sand Island, which was a U.S. Army uh, internment camp. And uh, the interesting thing about Sand Island is um, it is an island. It's right at the mouth of the Honolulu Harbor, and it's located entirely within the city limits of Honolulu. And therefore, this cover uh, from Honolulu, mailed at Honolulu to Sand Island, was all uh, within the service area of the uh, Honolulu Post Office. Um, it was censored, uh, obviously, by the, uh, the censor tape and the, and the civil censorship uh, hand stamp there, and uh, delivered to, to Mr. Smith over on Sand Island. So this is a two cent per ounce carrier office local use uh, from a public accounting firm to an interned uh, citizen on Sand Island. Um, and uh, I just think this is a fascinating cover. Uh, there are a number of covers uh, to Alfred and Susan, between Alfred and Susan uh, at various internment camps. And uh, um, I think they, they, it was a fascinating correspondence. And uh, uh, they, they both ended up being paroled in, I think, November of 43. Uh, Some other examples of carrier office mail. The, uh, the one on the upper left is uh, a uh, bisected four cent stamp used in Pittsburgh in 1942 to Pittsburgh. Uh, it's tied by a, a machine cancel. And uh, um, you, you might, this is this is a, actually a sealed envelope. Uh, you might question whether this is overpayment of a third class rate. Um, and certainly I can't prove that uh, with any degree of, uh, uh, of certainty, but I, my, my usual answer is if, if somebody went to the trouble to cut a four cent stamp in half, uh, I think they probably would have cut a three cent stamp in half instead, but uh, be that as it may. Um, the, the, the other one is, a, uh, is nice. It's, uh, it specifies first class mail and it's uh, used entirely within the borough of Brooklyn. Uh, it has a, a nice Brooklyn corner card, Brooklyn uh, cancellation and uh, Brooklyn address. Uh, and that was in June, 1938, also a, a very early use, 12 days after the stamp was issued. Um, Another interesting twist on carrier office mail. Um, this is a uh, two cent per ounce carrier office letter that actually originated in Valparaiso, uh, Chile. And uh, um, uh, as hard as that is to believe, it was actually transmitted, uh, I believe, either in a bag or under separate cover or a batch of other letters uh, originating in Chile. Um, it, this was uh, censored in Miami uh, based on the, the censored number and it was transmitted uh, to New York where it was put in the, uh, the mail stream at the two cent per ounce uh, carrier office local letter rate in August of 1942 and uh, delivered to a uh, commercial concern on, uh, on Broadway Avenue in New York.
Um, now here's another cover that takes us back to the relocation centers. Um, this is a, a carrier office local letter. Um, this particular letter has a Manzanar uh, return address, a Manzanar uh, machine postmark tying the, the two one cent Prexy booklet pane stamps. And uh, interestingly is addressed to uh, Los Angeles. Los Angeles and Manzanar happen to be about 200 miles apart. So you might wonder how that qualifies as a local letter. Um, the, uh, the, the Manzanar post office actually operated as a branch post office of the, the Los Angeles post office. So um, any piece of mail originating in Manzanar and addressed to Los Angeles qualified for the two cent uh, per ounce carrier office local letter rate uh, because it was uh, being serviced within the delivery area of the Los Angeles post office. Here's a little uh, overview or summary on uh, internment camp or relocation camp uses. Um, the uh, uh, local letter rates uh, for mail delivered within the relocation center were allowed by, uh, by two of the post offices. Heart Mountain allowed the one cent non-carrier local letter rate and uh, Minidoka camp and Hunter post office local letters. Um, when the carrier post office rate was eliminated on March 26, 1944, the uh, folks up in uh, Minidoka and Hunt had to uh, frank their, post, their covers with their letters with three cents of, of postage. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, the one cent rate was allowed at Heart Mountain because the letters were delivered by residents of the camp who are not employees of the post office department. Um, another interesting feature here is, is, uh, pertains to the cover we just saw, and uh, I think there's really some opportunity for discovery here. Uh, each, each relocation center uh, was able to send mail from the branch post office at the relocation center to the parent post office at the two cent carrier office local letter rate. Um, and, uh, but uh, not uh, examples uh, of uses in each case have, have not been found. Probably about half of the camps uh, have uh, been found represented in that fashion. And uh, here's a list of the uh, relocation centers, their parent post office and their, their branch post office. Um, as we mentioned, there's uh, down the, the, the mid uh, section of the list is Manzanar. Uh, the branch post office was was named Manzanar, and their parent post office was Los Angeles. Um, there, there, uh, there, there should be two cent per ounce carrier office letter rate uses uh, from each of these post offices if mail was sent from the, the branch office to the, the parent office during the, the time that uh, these uh, relocation centers were in use. But again, examples have not been discovered from each place, and um, so I think that's... Uh, uh, a place where there's some room for uh, future finds and, and discovery. Um, sorry if I keep using the word neat cover, but I think this, I think this is another neat cover. Uh, here's another carrier office local letter use. Um, this particular uh, mail uh, piece originated in San Francisco uh, and uh, this is uh, one of the only local letter uses to a, a, a repatriate on the, uh, the grip show uh, that I have I've personally seen. Um, this was uh, transmitted under separate cover with other mail from San Francisco to Mr. John Raymond, who was a confirmed passenger uh, listed on the manifest of the grip show uh, on one of their journeys back from the, the Far East, uh, send returning American diplomats and, and business people uh, after the outbreak of war. This uh, particular cover has uh, Chicago sensor tape number 3083 uh, resailing the left end. And um, on the, the, the back flap, it has a, the violet hand stamp received at New York undercover from uh, post office at Morgan Annex. Uh, so this originated in San Francisco, was censored in Chicago, uh, was sent to New York, placed in the mail stream July 16th uh, at the local letter rate and uh, held until the Gripsholm uh, docked in New York on August 25th of 1942. Um, these are not the prettiest covers, but I, I think they're fascinating. Uh, these are, are, are carrier office local letters. You'll, you'll notice they're both 
Frank with a three cent horizontal coil. Um, they're, they're both on the same sort of printed type stationary. Uh, and I want to just point out a couple of these features and uh, advance to the next slide. Um, they, they both have the corner card of the United War and Community Chest, which is a, uh, a charity uh, organization. And uh, this particular branch was uh, located in Newark, New Jersey. Uh, this happens to be one of the sort of the precursors of what we know as the United Way today. Uh, both of these were used in New York, uh, Newark, uh, excuse me, uh, and uh, both of them actually addressed in Newark. The other one the, on the upper left has a typed Newark uh, address. Uh, the one on the bottom right has a, a faded pencil address to Mr. Charles Morris on Center Street in Newark, New Jersey. Um, they also both have this uh, printed red endorsement for local mailing only at the two cent rate. Um, and uh, we'll go to the next slide, which explains some of the story. This was an enclosure in one of the uh, covers that I, that I uh, was able to find. And uh, uh, the story here, and it, this is probably the only time you'll ever see a three cent uh, stamp legitimately paying the two cent local letter rate. The, uh, as I mentioned, the United Warren Community Chest was a, a charity organization and they were uh, performing a fundraising uh, effort at this time. The Pavey Envelope Company uh, printed 50,000 number 10 uh, envelopes uh, for use in this fundraising drive, uh, each with the, the corner card there uh, that we saw on, on the previous slide. And 15,000 of, 15, of those were to be earmarked for, for local use within the, the Newark Post Office, the other 35,000 for, for regional use. By an error, uh, three cent stamps were put on all the envelopes, uh, including the ones for local use. Um, so that meant that uh, 15,000 uh, pennies too much were in postage were reused, and that was a $150 hit on their, their, their fundraiser just to, to get things started. So what they did to rectify this was they went back to the post office department and they graciously agreed to, to refund uh, $150 to the charity, but the envelopes had to be printed for local use only in red below the stamp. And that's what we, we see on these, uh, both these covers. Um, they have the three cent horizontal coil that was put on by mistake. Uh, this endorsement was put on, uh, printed on the envelopes uh, after the, the envelope was franked and then mailed uh, as part of their fundraising drive. And, uh, and this one in 43 and this one in, my, in January of 1944. I think it's kind of interesting that uh, this is typed on paper company stationery, uh, but uh, for whatever that's worth. But it's a contemporary account of uh, of the uh, of the incident. Um, this is a uh, um, infrequently, well, seldom seen use. Uh, this is a privately uh, carried local letter. Um, this is a uh, envelope that uh, was a proprietary envelope of the Galloway West Company, which is a dairy concern in Amherst, Wisconsin, uh, which had a, a carrier uh, post office. And uh, the way this worked was the, uh, the Galloway West Company had their own envelopes that they franked with a, a two cent stamp. They canceled with their own uh, device and ink and they use their envelopes uh, to deliver on their delivery trucks to the dairy uh, farmers uh, payment for their milk and butter fat. And uh, uh, they also would communicate test results for the, uh, the percent butter fat and whatnot uh, that they, they did uh, with the, the dairy farmers. Um, you can see the uh, return address over here of the Galloway West Company. The, the, this particular farmer was uh, Fred Shanklin and this was uh, a May 1943 usage. And uh, I want to go back to, to the next slide here. These uh, were the enclosures in this particular cover. This uh, slip on the left has uh, uh, refers to the average butterfat content of the uh, uh, material that they were transporting. And uh, this is an actual uh, uh, test shed for the, the butterfat content, I suppose, uh, used by the Amherst West Company. And uh, if anybody wants to do any uh, additional reading, this, this uh, particular cover was written up by Terry Krasinski in the March uh, 2018 uh, issue of the uh, United States Specialist. And uh, Bill DiPaolo also uh, mentions a cover from this same correspondence in the, uh, the, the book, The Prexy Era, which was published by the APS. And uh, uh, I think it's kind of a, a fascinating uh, example, really. And, 
I, I've, I've seen very few examples of privately carried uh, local letters. Um, let me get on to uh, uh, relationship of the local rate with other mail services. And uh, basically, uh, anything that can be sent first class, uh, whether it was a certified, registered, special delivery, uh, COD, uh, could also uh, be used on local letters. And uh, I think at one time, Dixon Preston had a, uh, uh, an airmail letter within Portland, uh, but uh, I'm not sure how that worked out. Um, here's an uh, uh, example of a, a registered local letter. Uh, this uh, particular uh, fee structure is two cents per ounce local letter rate and 15 cents uh, minimum registry. It's paid by the uh, 17 cent Andrew Johnson stamp in uh, December of 1942, uh, used within the New Haven, Connecticut post office. Um, this is a uh, uh, a cover that uh, uh, I think is a nice example. This was uh, used within the Los Angeles uh, post office. This is a double two cent per ounce local letter rate plus three cents return receipt fee plus 15 cents uh, minimum uh, registry. And this is a, a 1940 use uh, paid by the, the 22 cent stamp. Um, here's a, a special delivery of a local letter. Um, this has a, a single 12 cent stamp and uh, there's a little bit more interest to this than uh, perhaps meets the eye. The, uh, uh, the fee here is a two cent per ounce local letter plus 10 cent uh, uh, special delivery fee. Uh, but you'll notice this was mailed by Western Union. Uh, it has a, a San Francisco return address and just under the window uh, on the bottom right you see the San Francisco, California uh, part of the address. and. Uh, um, this really was an attempt by Western Union to deal with a, a strike uh, that went on for three and a half months by the San Francisco local of the American Communications Association uh, in late 1939, which is the only time you'll see this particular use uh, around. And uh, the, the messengers were, were not delivering the mail because or their, their telegrams because of their strike. So Western Union tried to get around that by using the, uh, the post office department uh, special delivery service to uh, deliver their mail. And you can see the October uh, 1939 uh, special delivery cancellation on the back of the envelope. Here's another special delivery use, this one in New York. Uh, this is a uh, uh, double uh, two cent per ounce local letter use at a carrier office with 10 cents uh, special delivery fee in March of 1940 uh, by someone answering a uh, help wanted ad in uh, the New York Times. So uh, uh, nice, interesting cover and uh, uh, pretty seldom seen use of a, certainly the 14 cent stamp. Uh, another uh, 14 cent use, this one uh, within the Columbia, South Carolina post office. Uh, the stamp is tied by an undated Columbia roller cancer, cancel, uh, uh, but the, the fee here is two cent per ounce local letter rate plus 12 cents uh, collect on delivery fee. And uh, um, uh, again, this was used in, in Columbia, South Carolina, but the exact date uh, is not known, but it's certainly pre-March uh, 1944 when uh, this service was abolished. And how do you get higher amounts of postage on, on uh, local letters? This is 40 cents postage uh, on a local letter used uh, in, in Pittsburgh. Um, the, the, the fees on this are two cent uh, per ounce local letter rate. Uh, you'll notice here they specify uh, return receipt requested uh, showing address uh, where delivered. And the, the fee for, for that specific service of 23 cents, uh, it's also registered. And uh, the, the, the minimum registry fee at that time was 15 cents. So this is two cents local letter, 23 cents return receipt, showing address were delivered and 15 cents uh, minimum registry uh, paid by uh, the eight four and a half cent stamps and the one and the four cent James Madison for a total of 40 cents uh, postage. And this is a uh, horizontal coil pair used on the last day of carrier office mail in New York City on March 25th, 1944. 
So what else could happen to local letters? Um, not infrequently, uh, the addressee had uh, had moved, uh, which is, is not, not a unusual event. Uh, and a local letter mail could be forwarded. If it was forwarded within the post office that it was mailed, uh, it would have uh, been forwarded free for the, the, the first class rate had already been paid. Uh, when somebody had moved out of the service area of the, the mailing uh, office, um, then the standard first class letter rate had to be paid. And here's a March 1940 use in Springfield, Massachusetts, where the uh, addressee had uh, moved to Leminster. And uh, this was assessed postage due, uh, and uh, uh, postage due was collected uh, in Leminster when it was, uh, was delivered there. Um, some other examples of, of forwarding. Uh, the one on the left is probably actually a remailing, really. That, uh, it's incoming uh, letter from uh, England uh, in 1940 to Mrs. Reynolds at the Guarantee Trust Company on Fifth Avenue. And uh, apparently Ms. Reynolds was at the Hotel Seymour. Uh, so this uh, letter was uh, mailed from England, censored, uh, delivered to the Guarantee Trust. and. The folks there uh, remailed this with a two cent uh, John Adams stamp to Mrs. Uh, Reynolds, who is now at the Hotel Seymour on West 45th Street. Uh, the cover on the bottom right is uh, one of my, uh, actually one of my favorite covers. Uh, cost about a dollar, I think. And uh, this is a, uh, um, a two cent uh, per ounce local letter rate uh, cover that was mailed from a firm in Bristol, Tennessee uh, to uh, a Mrs. Howard in, in Bristol, Tennessee. Uh, there are two Bristol machine councils there. There's a May 30th and a May 31st. Uh, it just so happens that Mrs. Howard lived in Bristol, Virginia, which is on the other side of town from Bristol, Tennessee. So uh, that would involve a different post office. Uh, the letter was assessed, postage due one cent, and a one cent proxy was applied and sent back uh, and then ultimately delivered uh, apparently to Mrs. Howard who was in Bristol, Virginia, and not Tennessee. Um, I wanted to include some advertising covers. I, I think that uh, um, they are, uh, are, are beautiful, um, and I, I think they're a, another avenue of, uh, of, of, of any aspect of postal history, really, but I think especially uh, you know, Prexy postal history and even local letter use that uh, uh, are worth uh, exploring and appreciating. Um, all these are our carrier office uses. The one on the left is a, uh, uh, a beautiful multicolored uh, cover with an Egyptian uh, theme from Denver in July of 1938. The uh, village blacksmith uh, in Watertown, Wisconsin made beautiful multicolored advertising covers. And uh, uh, this is a 1940 use um, from them. Here's the... Uh, candy advertising cover from Bucyrus, Ohio uh, in 1939, which I think is a, a super attractive cover. Uh, an all over multicolored cover from Rochester, New York from the Phillips Packing Company, uh, listing all their soup varieties in their uh, massive uh, soup packing plant. And uh, a beautiful uh, multicolored uh, cigar uh, advertising cover from Tampa, Florida in uh, 1942. And uh, a few uh, more lighthearted uh, uh, entries here. Um, I wanted to show some things that uh, uh, look like local letters, but uh, actually aren't. And I uh, also want to mention one thing about how do you tell definitively whether a cover is a local letter use. Um, a lot of these I think you can get a good idea from, uh, but to actually prove definitively, uh, you, you, you'd have to consult the, the postal guide, which has an alphabetical listing of, uh, of post offices and whether they're carrier or non-carrier uh, offices. But uh, again, to back to, the, to these covers, these are uh, covers that at first glance look like local letter uses, but they're not. Um, the one on the bottom left uh, has a, a cute San Francisco return address. It has a San Francisco machine cancel. And it's addressed in a typical fashion for a local letter use, uh, just Miss King uh, uh, in a city. Um, so it is a, uh, 
uh, a geographically local letter, but certainly not uh, meet the criteria for a, a postal local letter. Uh, and you'll notice the, the date is 1952, which is eight years after the carrier office local letter uh, use was abolished. The one on the right uh, is from Lincoln, Nebraska. A similar situation has a Lincoln, Nebraska uh, return address, has a Lincoln, uh, Nebraska machine cancel and address to a city address. Um, the keys here are this is an unsealed envelope, but it has an undated cancel, which is typical third class mail, which is this uh, actually represents. Here's another not quite local letter. Uh, again, geographically, it certainly is. It's uh, got a uh, Monroe, Louisiana uh, return address. It has a Monroe pre cancel, and uh, it's addressed to a, a city address. Uh, the key here is uh, both the pre-cancel and the endorsement of Section 562 PLNR, which indicates uh, bulk rate uh, third class mail use. Um, so still kind of a, a nice cover, but not a, a local letter use. And this is also a not quite local letter, but it's a uh, for me, it's, it's a, an example I wanted to use to discuss a, a very narrow uh, aspect of, of local letters. Uh, so I call this the not quite Queens County local letter. Um, this is a uh, cover mailed in December of 1940. It has a Jamaica Long Island uh, uh, return address as a Jamaica uh, New York machine cancel, and it's addressed to Jamaica. And uh, um, uh, Jamaica is located in Queens County, New York. And uh, if you study rates or spend much time looking at the, at the domestic rate book by Beecher and Vavrikevich, uh, you, you'll notice an entry in the chapter on local letters that refers to a two cent per ounce carrier office local letter rate between post offices in Queens County. And this was effective in uh, I believe June 24th, 1940. Um, so when I saw this, I thought that's what this represented, but it, but it is not. This is a, uh, um, a letter entirely within the, uh, the service area of the Jamaica Post Office, which is a, a post office uh, in Queens County. Um, but I, I want to discuss uh, some more about the, uh, the Queens County rate and explain how that uh, uh, actually worked. Um, the, uh, the, the rate book calls it the... Uh, uh, between post offices in Queens County, uh, and, it, and, it, and the legislation that uh, sanctioned this rate does not specify Queens County, but rather it says that any county with a population of one million or more persons that's contained within the limits of a city was eligible for the local letter rate between post offices in that county. And it just so happened that when this legislation was introduced, uh, Queens County was the only county that qualified. Um, and uh, I want to have to give credit to Steve Southerner for helping me understand this, but uh, Queens County has, uh, and, and it had at the time, four separate post offices, Long Island City, Flushing, Jamaica, and Far Rockaway. So to qualify for the what the people consider the Queens County local letter rate, this had to be a, uh, a two cent per ounce local letter rate mailed between uh, one of these or two of these four post offices uh, in Queens County. For example, Long Island City to Far Rockaway or Jamaica to Flushing. Um, and I, I, I personally have, I'm sure they're there, I'm sure they're somewhere, but I've never seen one. And uh, uh, so I think this is another opportunity for discovery. And uh, I would love to see one, but uh, I, I haven't. And just to uh, recap what I would consider some of the, uh, the real jewels of local letter uh, uses, uh, certainly territorial and possession uses are, are very uh, nice and, and, and somewhat difficult to find. Uh, single frankings, paying multiple services. Um, I think any relocation or a camp or internment camp use is, uh, it would be a, a choice use. Uh, privately carried uses, uh, certainly. Um, any post August 1st, 1958 rate change, uh, Frank with a Prexy or honestly any stamp for that uh, matter, uh, paying a, a local letter rate at a non-carrier post office after August 1st, 1958 would be a real jewel. And um, 
uh, like we just mentioned, anything used between the various post offices in Queens County paying the two cent per ounce local letter rate, I think would be uh, a, a real fascinating uh, usage. And that's all I have. <laughs>